All right, in this section, we're going to start talking about combat results. Now, we briefly touched on those in the previous video talking about uh, direct fire actions. We're going to get into them a little more specifically now. Now, I said previously how when you have a unit taking attacks, that it's going to go disruption, reduction, and elimination. So an example of that is let's say our T-80 up here is firing at our M1 Abrams. The first unblocked hit is going to disrupt the Abrams. If it receives another hit, it will be reduced, which is going to cause it to flip to its backside where you see it has the white stripe signifying that it is reduced. And then if it receives another hit, at that point, it's going to be eliminated. Now, just as an example, let's say that we have our reduced M1 and it is disrupted, but let's say it has an activation in between and it removes that disruption, but it is still reduced at this time. If it takes another hit, it's not going to be eliminated. It will be disrupted again. Then if it receives a hit, it'll be dis it will be eliminated. You do have some units like this Jeep Tow that is a one-step unit. That just removes one step when you're performing your reductions because this Jeep will become disrupted and then eliminated. There is no reduction step with a one-step unit like the Jeep. Okay, as an example, I've got these spread out here to show you what happens with an HQ unit with, uh, with combat results. But let's say all three of these counters are stacked in the same hex, okay? So you have the tank and the Jeep and the HQ is stacked there with the tank. An HQ cannot be directly targeted by an attack, but they can be affected by an attack to a unit in its hex, and it does not have to be the unit that it's stacked with. So in our example here, the HQ is attached to the tank, but they're all stacked in the same stack in the same hex with this Jeep. So if the Jeep gets attacked, it could potentially affect the HQ as well. So what you're going to do is if a unit that is stacked with an HQ or a leader is reduced, you're going to roll 1d6 for each HQ or leader that's in the hex. And if one unit stacked with the HQ is eliminated, at that point you're going to add two to the roll, changing the possible result. So what that means is let's say this Jeep is eliminated from the hex from the uh, that's has the M1 Abrams and the HQ. If it's eliminated, it's going to add two to the role that the HQ is having to make to determine whether or not it uh, is affected by the attack. You'll roll your 1d6 and on a 1 to 3, the HQ or the leader is not affected, but on a 4 to 6, the HQ or leader is affected. It will be reduced for an HQ, which is just like another unit, you'll flip it over to its reduced side. Or if it's a leader counter, it will also be flipped over to its wounded side. Let's say though that this attack took place and the HQ was already reduced and then the Jeep was eliminated. If you rolled the 1d6, you add two to the result and it fails the result, the HQ being already reduced is going to be moved to the suppression holding box instead. If at any point the HQ is stacked in a hex where all the units that are in the hex are eliminated, the HQ is automatically going to be reduced and moved to the suppression holding box.